If you keep getting jammed on your forehand, I'm gonna help you with that in this video because obviously when you get jammed, it prevents you from using optimal biomechanics, which is the key to being able to efficiently generate power and still maintaining control. So we're gonna be going through a three-step approach that you'll probably need to follow to fix the problem and develop a much better quality of forehand. I hope you enjoy the video and find it beneficial. If you do, really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this type of content, uh, really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel as well. So if you're getting jammed, it means you're getting too close to the ball. So to solve this, you need to focus on being further away from the ball. And you actually need to make it a priority within your practice. Where a lot of people go wrong is they try and fix too many things all in one go. So players might be thinking about their split step, their movement to the ball, the unit turn, the way they lift their elbow, their racket lag, the contact, the follow through, and it's simply too many things to think about all in one go. Our brains can only cope with so much, so you need to focus on one or two things at any one time, and if you're getting jammed, the thing that you need to focus on is your spacing, being further away from the ball. And you have to structure your practice in a way to allow that, and then focus on it all the way through the practice. So that as the ball is coming cross court, if you're doing a cross court forehand to forehand rally, you're thinking, okay, where, where's the ball gonna land, and how far away from that do I need to be? If it's coming into your body and you're trying to hit an inside out forehand again, you've got to think about creating that space, becoming mentally aware of the space that you need and then focusing on it. And you have to focus on it for a period of time until it's done. Because when you start learning things, you have to kind of think about every little step. You do it more and more and more and more and eventually it becomes a habit. So you've got to kind of habitualize the spacing with good quality training. That's the first kind of part to it is the, the prioritizing it within training, but then we've got a couple of things that are gonna limit your ability to do that. So that's what we need to talk about now. And the first one is gonna be your footwork and movement to the ball. The next piece of the puzzle is gonna be the footwork because every single shot you deal with is different. So now you've got the awareness of focusing on your spacing, but you need to have the correct footwork in order to be able to make all the necessary adjustments to set up the right distance from the ball. And if you watch high level players play, it's one of the big things that separates them. The footwork is dramatically better. They're generally taking a lot of little adjustment steps to help them optimize their positioning. Lower level players tend to be a little bit more planted to the floor, less steps they set up in position. It's often not the right position and that is why they get jammed. So you're probably gonna need to do some work to improve the quality of your footwork. And the way that you approach that is you practice doing the individual steps because we've got different types of footwork pattern that we need. You do a number of repetitions. Again, you have to go through the conscious stage of learning, practice the footwork generally without the ball first. You do it enough times until it's a habit and then you'll just start to naturally be able to use this appropriate footwork as you're moving towards the ball. And when you combine better footwork with focus practice on and awareness about the spacing, that can make a huge difference. Instead of going through different footwork patterns here, I've made another video that's gonna go into a lot more detail and give you some kind of flow steps that you can work on that's really gonna help with this. I'll place a link to that down in the description because what we need to talk about now is the thing that holds most players back and something that you will almost certainly have to address and that's your ability to accurately read and predict where the ball's going. So in order for you to set up in the right position and in order for you to use the correct footwork pattern, you have to know where the ball is going. And this is where it becomes problematic for a lot of people because the vast majority of players, visual systems aren't capable of accurately and quickly reading and predicting where the ball is going so that then they can set up in the right position. So hopefully it makes sense that if you can't predict where the ball's going, it's gonna be really hard to know how far away you should be from the ball, which makes it hard to use the footwork. The good news though is that vision is very trainable. There are normally you know, underlying visual deficits that cause problems with this visual spatial awareness. I've created a video that's gonna show you a couple of assessments that you can do to kind of figure out what's going on with you, within your body. I'll place a link to that down in the description as well. And once we understand what's going on, we can do training drills to improve our visual processing so we can read where the ball's going more quickly and we can predict where the ball's going more efficiently. And that is a very essential piece of the puzzle to address your 
issue with getting jammed. Now I've made another video that's gonna show you uh, a train drill or maybe a couple of train drills to help with this. I'll place that down in the description as well because it really is a three-pronged attack. You need the good quality practice focusing on the spacing, turning this into a habit. You need the footwork and then you need the visual skills to hold it all together. So there's a few different resources down in the description that I highly advise you check out. But if you really want additional help with this and you just want to fix this spacing problem, sometimes there are other things going on or often players need a little bit more help with the visual side of things or often the coordination side of things to make the footwork happen. And this is what I work with players doing. I use brain-based training to help tennis players basically do the things that they can't do on court because we've got all this great coaching information, but if your body isn't capable of doing it, so you can't read where the ball's going, you can't track the ball through contact, you don't have coordination to adjust your swing and control the angle of the racket face, that's ultimately gonna max out the level of tennis that you can play. So if you'd like to learn more about brain-based training for improving your tennis performance, I've created a free masterclass that's gonna go into more detail. I'll place a link up in the description, or up there, and I'll place a link down in the description so you can check that out. I have a program that I work with players via. If you sign up for the free masterclass towards the end of the masterclass, it's gonna tell you a little bit more about my program, how I work with players, and the next steps that are involved in case you're interested, okay? I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it to be beneficial. Definitely check out those resources that are down in the description and uh, I'll place uh, a link to one of them right here so you can check that out if you're interested.